G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. If you talked about this five years ago, you might have been labeled a War Thunder conspiracy theorist, but now it is just simply too obvious to ignore. War Thunder has been slowly increasing the amount of more and more powerful missiles at lower and lower tiers of Jet RB. As you can see, over time, more and more, more powerful missiles have been added to the game, and battle ratings overall have not increased as much, leading to a compression of missiles, or if you will, a power creep of missiles at lower tier. Now before we get into the video, I would just like to let you guys know that if you would like to support the channel, you can find my decal link in the description below that gives you 3% off at the War Thunder store. So if you want to be a horrible individual and buy some of the premiums that I'll mention in this video, then by all means, go for it. I'm not one to stop you. But alternatively, if you'd like to be a total Chad and perhaps Talisman a main tree vehicle, you can do that with Golden Eagles as well. Again, link in the description and at the end of the video. So. What are these jets that I'm talking about and what are these missiles? Well, first of all, let's go on about these sorts of planes that get these missiles. These types of aircraft are generally not very powerful planes without the missiles. They are either one-trick ponies being extremely fast and having nothing else, or they're very heavy or very sort of unwieldy and bulky, and it's very hard to get onto the target with the guns, and so the missiles are generally used to make up the difference in this aircraft. A lot of the time, these planes are often considered multi-role fighters or ground attack aircraft, or, or rather strike aircraft, and are given these missiles as a sort of ability to make it up and uh, compete with the fighters. And I'd just like to talk about that before we sort of get into everything again. These particular aircraft, generally speaking, being attackers, I believe should not be com compatriots to the fighter aircraft. If these are ground attack aircraft, they should be specializing in ground attack roles. They should have uh, ordnance that reflects that role and aircraft, sort of that anti-aircraft role should come secondary to that because their primary role is to attack ground targets. Now in War Thunder, it kind of has a dynamic balance with ARB and ground RB being two separate areas. And I did give the example of the Harrier GR9, or GR7 rather, and the A10A, and I compared the two roles in uh, Ground RB, and I was sort of thrown, raked over the coals for that by suggesting that they were very similar aircraft. Now, of course, there is a D BR differential, but when we get to the meat and vegetables of it, I think the GR7 is a lot less of a problem because of the appropriate battle rating that it is put at compared to that of the A10. And again, we'll get into that in a moment, but Generally speaking, these aircraft are not particularly good. So what does Gaijin do? Give them an excellent set of missiles to back them up. And these missiles might be a little too good for their battle rating, let's say. Gaijin started this off with the Yak-38 and the AV-8s. The AV-8s had the AIM-9Gs, and these were practically the first planes at that battle rating, at that sort of 9.3 and 9.7, to get AIM-9Gs, and they did really, really well. Of course, these planes some point early in their, in their lifespan got air spawns and now they get a ground start which is a lot more appropriate but these planes had an ability to just dominate the battlefield they had the option to get their two kills and then once they got their two kills they were practically buttfuck useless and that's the problem with these aircraft they are now one trick ponies in the sense that they only have two shots or in some cases four like the Harrier GR1 with its four SRAMs and the A10A late with its four AIM-9Ls, it gets an ability to just get two or four instant easy kills. And this is where I have a problem. Starting with the Yak, they got R60s, and R60s at 9.3. That is extremely low. 8.3 jets could see these R60s, and they had no chance against them. Very few of these jets even were in service around the time that these types of missiles were a thing. At, at 8.7, you had planes like the MiG-15 and the Sabre, who would regularly face very powerful missiles, and having a high G overload allowed these missiles to cut into even the tightest corners of planes like the MiG-15 and the F-86 Sabre. 
This resulted in these planes basically being able to do nothing if they made the simple mistake of being less than three kilometers in front of their opponent. This essentially made the Sabre and the MiG-15 null and void in the matchmaker until the spam died down and in that case there was still the opportunity for a rogue Yak-38 or a rogue AV-8 to get a sneak kill. The other side of that coin was the Harrier GR-1. The Harrier GR-1 was introduced at a lower battle rating than 10.0 and again wreaked havoc on these 8.7s and these 9.0s. It was rightfully put at battle rating 10.0, but I still think 10.0 is a bit of a big ask, coming from a 9.0 fighter. These 9.0s still don't stand a chance against these missiles, but the trade-off with the SRAM was that the SRAM did not have as much range. Of course, that uh, absolutely crazy gimbal limit was absolutely insane and still remains insane, but these missiles are now a little bit more tame because they don't really see these planes as often. And of course, the 8.7s have a bit of a chance away from this, this uh, absolutely insane missile platform. Of course, we first experienced that insane missile platform with the Hunter uh, F6. And the Hunter F6 was quite powerful for its battle rating and again, got put to 10.0 very quickly. It now sits at 10.3 where it is a little bit more useless, but you know, we'll get to that in another video. Again, these R60s mostly took away a lot of the fun from this particular battle rating. It disincentivized players from picking up these lower tier planes, these main tree planes, in favor of buying a premium or by grinding out and probably buying the missiles on these particular jets. It's not a very fun plane to fly once the two missiles have been used. In fact, it sucks. It's not even a fun plane in the slightest, but with those two missiles, you get a couple of easy kills, you die, you get out of that match, and you move on to the next one. And that is what made the Yak-38 so much more fun than the F-86, or any other plane around that battle rating that just did not have the performance to deal with such a plane. This problem has now compounded with the introduction of the A-10A and the Su-25 Frogfoot. These two planes both have all aspect missiles, and of course the A-10s were moved up in the battle rating, but the Su-25s have not. And they are at, again, a stupidly low battle rating where they see planes that cannot do anything about these R-60Ms. These are all aspect missiles that perform essentially the same way as an R-60, except with an all aspect ratio. The AIM-9Ls, on the other hand, are like a souped up AIM-9G, where there is absolutely zero escape whatsoever. And again, this plane is at a criminally low battle rating and has the guns and the ground ordnance to be at a much higher battle rating, fighting against planes that are better off against it in Air RB, as well as dealing with other SPAA that are a little bit more well equipped. These types of planes do not belong at facing 8.7 or 9.0 aircraft. They are simply too strong, and Gaijin has put them there on purpose. Both the Yak-38s, the AV-8s, and the A-10 and the Su-25, these are the four main premiums that have absolutely ruined the matchmaker. Go to any 9.3 or 9.7 or 10.3 matchmaker, and you will see it clogged up with Su-25s, and you will also see it clogged up with A-10s. The only plane that I have found to be really good at dealing with these are either 11.0s, 10.7s, or 10.3s, or the A5C, which is the fifth plane in this lineup that gives me the absolute shits. This particular plane, well, actually it's the sixth because there are two Harriers, but you know what, that's beside the point. The A5 is the only plane in this sort of lineup that can truly make mincemeat of these aircraft. And that's sad, because that means that you have to buy a premium to compete with other premiums. And this particular battle rating, this sort of, you know, 9.0, 9.3 through to 10.3, is oversaturated with premiums that have terrible performance, use their two missiles or their four missiles, and then are absolutely useless for the rest of the game. So if these players, who most of the time are not particularly good players as well, because they may have just bought it, downloaded the game and, and started using their premium. These particular players 
end up either absolutely laying waste to the enemy team or the complete reverse. And this just absolutely takes the fun out of any match. Why would I queue when I'm either going to be absolutely ruined and sniped by an R60M or an AIM-9L or some AIM-9G camping AV-8 who's got 800 flares or 400 flares and then just die? Or on the, on the converse, get completely whipped by some absolute moron in a premium who, again, may have been camping in space or may have just gotten lucky and gone for a head-on, fired a missile, and that's the end of it because I can't run away because he's faster than me and I can't turn fight him. The only option that I have is to turn off my engine and hope for the best, and that's not fun in the slightest. Gaijin has been consistently doing this over the past few years, and it is really, really detrimental to this battle rating because this is the stepping stone into top tier. This is where players learn to master their missiles, master flares, and they start learning, you know, switch your afterburner off and, and all of these typical maneuvers, as well as learning their radar missiles. These are crucial parts of gameplay that these players are just absolutely laying waste to. And it's horrible. It sucks for the people playing 9.0s and 8.7s. It sucks for the people playing 10.3s. And it sucks for the other people playing in between that are trying to grind out their tech tree planes. And Gaijin is purposely doing this in order to make sales. It's patently obvious. These players are literally funding Gaijin's new Lamborghinis. It is so simple and it is so frustrating to see because this is absolutely ruining the fun at this critical tier and there is nothing that can be done except battle rating decompression. These planes need to be moved away, but they cannot be moved away and still remain competitive. Even though they're ground attackers, I understand that there must be so, sort of something they can do. And you can't just throw the Yak-38 at 10.3. But perhaps 10.0 is a little bit better. Perhaps those two AIM-9, oh sorry, R60s are, you know, able to do something at 10.0 but still the player can face some serious recourse if they don't position their plane properly, or alternatively, if they decide to just go into the middle of the battlefield and, again, not use their plane properly. There's a little bit of skill now once these planes are moved a little bit higher, but the moment you get to 10.0 and 10.3 and 10.7, you start putting these planes up against problematic or aircraft that will absolutely, again, lay waste to them. And once again, that in itself is a problem because you've just sold someone a premium that is now no longer competitive and is in fact just food for planes like the F-14 and the Mirage 2000. Not only that, you're now selling premiums that touch into the top tier of battle. And again, this is a big problem because then people can essentially buy their way into combat where skill whilst has sort of diminished, I would suppose, because the you know missile meta is not entirely sort of driven by pure mechanical gun skill and pure knowledge of the aircraft. It is now a multitude of things and it is a lot easier to master missiles than it is to master guns and positioning and your aircraft as an individual. But I understand that there is still a level of skill or a level of special ability that must be used at top tier that these planes both can't compete with and the pilots that are generally flying these planes, i.e. new pilots, are generally unable to understand completely the meta that surrounds them. And I see this as a real issue. So one of these things that I will have to do as perhaps a, a follow-on from the BR video, and now again a follow-on from this particular video, perhaps I'll have to just give this a, a little bit of a look in and make a sort of setting of battle ratings that Gaijin could perhaps fo follow off as a template or something that maybe could start a conversation in order to sort of encourage battle rating decompression. These are the types of things that I would really like to see because I believe they're important to the game's longevity and, long, uh, and good health, but I also believe that these things are fundamental in creating excellent gameplay. You can't just have these premiums that are clogging up this matchmaker and absolutely ruining it to the point where it's no longer fun to play your F-86 Sabre and it's no longer fun to play your MiG-17 and it, hell, it's probably no longer fun to play 
other planes that are a little bit more competitive around that. Say even the F-100s will likely get slaughtered by things with R-60Ms. And in fact, the few R-60Ms that I have fired at F-100s have been a raging success. And it's not that rewarding for me. And it's certainly not that rewarding for the F-100 pilots or the English Electric Lightning pilots or the MiG-19 pilots or hell, even other pilots that have these missiles at their disposal. It's a less rewarding matchmaker, it is a less enjoyable experience for everyone, and yet Gaijin still seems to pile on the money bag. They just always insist on slowly destroying something until there is nothing left. And I say to Gaijin, this needs to stop. And the player base should also say the same thing. If you would like to use your wallets, don't buy an SU-25, don't buy an A-10, don't buy an A-5, unless you want to watch the world burn. I'm not going to stop you. I'm, I'm, I understand if somebody wants to go and buy the flavor of the month or buy the thing that slaps ass every single time because that is the thing that will make them the most silver lions. That is the thing that will make them the most RP. And at the end of the day, this game is just one big grind up until you get to top tier and then, and then you kind of get to enjoy the gameplay. But War Thunder is brutal in this way. And this is one of the big things that lets the game down. If you do not make yourself a good gameplay experience if you if you don't sort of collect and and establish a healthy matchmaker you'll end up with a situation like this where the player base is left out unless they spend big money and those that want to play free to play or that those that want to play these game these planes that developers have put lots of time and effort into are simply going to be laid to waste now for me, this is a big mistake, and this is such a, a lost opportunity for Gaijin, because these planes are brilliant. I would love to play more Swift F7, I would love to play more F86K, I would love to play more F100s. Hell, I would like to try the PFM again, but I just cannot deal with this absolutely ridiculous matchmaker. There is simply nothing for it, and there is simply no point in giving these planes a try, because you're just going to get shit on every time you attempt it. And for me, that is where the big loss comes in. It is such a sad thing to just see this disappear right before our eyes. So ladies and gents, that'll do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. And of course, if you have any more input into this topic, feel free to boost the algorithm and leave a comment below. For those of you that have continued watching my content through the past so several months and, and through my hiatus, I greatly appreciate you. And uh, for those of you that support the channel monetarily, I also greatly appreciate all of you. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.